Hey, welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive. You're watching my path to OCP. Today is day 60. And actually, day 60 is almost actually over. It's counting down to the last few hours in day 60. That means I have 30 days left in the lab out of my 90 days. It's getting a little real here, people. Uh, last video I did was about two weeks ago. Uh, I was actually in the airport heading out to New Orleans for my uh, Sans GX pen. And I got to tell you, that class is well worth taking. Um... A lot of great information in that class. Uh, one thing I would mention is it didn't fully line with the OSCP. It's probably more OSCE because uh, there was so much in-depth knowledge of buffer overflows from standard buffer overflows like we do in the OSCP to buffer overflows dealing with SEH uh, and ROPs and some other bypasses. Great class altogether. I will try to post some videos about that shortly. I have tons of content for that. Uh, right now, though, my main purpose, uh, my sole purpose right now is really just focusing on the OCP. Once OCP is done out of the way, pass or fail, um, I will do some GX Pen videos. Uh, if I fail it, I will come back to the OCP again. Um, but I may not do some lab. I may just try to retake the test again. We'll see what happens. I do have the test scheduled for May 21st, I believe it is. March, April, May. March, no, sorry, March 21st, not May 21st. Um, so it is definitely coming up close. It, today is, what, the 17th? So, uh, a, a little bit over a month away before I sit down for my second attempt at the exam. Uh, with that being said, let's go through some of the notes I have for you guys today. <clears throat> at the current time, I believe there's about six public, uh, network machines I don't have compromised yet. Out of all the other ones I have already done, um... I'm kind of about to get into one of the IT machines, give or take. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And for show notes today, I know a lot of my videos are not very technical when it comes to OCP stuff, and that's for a reason, right? It's a lot of stuff I can't share with you, and I apologize to you. I apologize for that. I know a lot of you guys like the heavy detail tech videos that I used to do uh, for VulnHub and Hack the Box, and I will eventually get back there. Uh, once the OCP is done, I will definitely he head back to Hack the Box and VulnHub to do some more machines. Um, but until then, th there's that borderline of how much information I can share with you. So let's go through some uh, things for today that's uh, more on the more technical side that may help you with your OCP, right? <clears throat> the first thing I got here is PowerShell using another user's credentials. This is actually good not only for the OCP, but there is still an actual active box in uh, HCB where you need to use PowerShell with someone else's credentials to carry out an attack. Uh, when that box retires, I'll do a video about that, but right now it's still a active box. So, <clears throat> with that being said, the easiest way I found to do this, right, and, and there's probably a million ways to do this, right? I'm no PowerShell guru. Um, actually, I bounced this idea off a few of my, uh, with uh, one of my coworkers who's really great with PowerShell. Because the PowerShell script I had when I first did the OSCP didn't work uh, any longer. I don't know what changed. Maybe I mistyped something. Uh, the one thing I have noticed that my note-taking ability has greatly increased since my last OSCP attempt. So there could be a slew of different things why that script no longer worked. With that being said, what I did here is I created another PowerShell script. And basically what we're going to do here, we're going to define some variables. So first we're going to define our password. So our password, whatever our password is. So here I put my super password. Now in theory, you're going to put your real password here. As you're going through the OCP and you're doing your post enumeration, right? You're dumping the hashes. You're trying to crack the hashes. If you can't dump the hash, right? You should be running them through a tool called crap map ex uh, execute. And I showed that in a few videos before. So with crap map execute, you can actually use the username Send it across the whole domain, so all IPs of 10, uh, 10 .11 .1 0 24 or 192.168, whatever whatever range you want to send it across, define the username with dash U, and then put dash capital H, and then put the second half of the hash into that value, and send that over the wire. And what the crack map will do is it'll go across and try that on every single one. So if you can't crack the hash, you can try to pass the hash in a bulk attack to see where the hash is valuable. Now that's great, right? But let's say we're able to crack that hash. Uh, we want to keep a list of all the hashes that we've been able to crack and use them later on. Uh, and then when you see these accounts again, try them. So 
Uh, for example, let's say there's an account called Bob, and Bob shows up on 10 different boxes. There's a good chance that Bob's password may be reused somewhere, and we may want to reuse Bob's password. So knowing that we have these hashes, we can try to crack them or pass the hash. In this case, in, in this example, I was able to compromise a box early on. Now, if you're following along the lab material, you'll find this box right off the back. Um, you'll find this probably within the section when you start doing um, uh, scripting. You're going to do some uh, enumeration scripting in your PWK lab work. You're going to start going out, looking at boxes. You're going to find this low hanging fruit box, and you're going to quickly compromise this box. Now, if you quickly compromise this box using the well-known vulnerability, either in Metasploit or doing it manual, you want to spend some time on this box and then look for the hashes. Once you find these hashes, you're going to want to crack these hashes because that hash you crack is going to be used later on. So now let's say you did crack that hash. We're going to uh, specify that password that you cracked as my super password, right? Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the variable, we're going to assign the variable uh, secure password, and basically we're going to take the plain text of the super secure password that we found earlier and convert it to secure string so we can basically use it within the program. So to do that, we're going to do convert to convert to secure strings and we convert the password variable and then basically we're going to save that into secure password. So now we have the user, we have the password in a secure string format that can be used within PowerShell. Next we're going to find the username. So here we're going to use the username administrator and as I said this is an example this is not the true uh, administrator account or password for this. So we define the username uh, administrator. Next we want to do is we're creating a new object for automation, and we're going to create an argument list of username and secure password. So we have an argument list, so just a list of username and secure password. So administrator and my super password. Next, we're going to start a process. So this process, the one thing I noticed about start process now versus when I first did this is there's some issues about having spaces and defining the exact path to your objects. So what I did here is I created an executable user add.exe. And what I did in here is it's just a simple C code I wrote. And in that C script, and I'll post it in my in below, um, you'll actually run into this within the labs as well, where they actually show you how to create a, a similar script. And what my C script does is basically it'll add my user account uh, to the system. I'll add my password, it'll add me to the admin group, and then it'll add me to remote desktop. And if remote desktop is not enabled, it'll edit the registry and enable a remote desktop for me if that is the method of that box to enable that. I compile that executable, and then basically what I'm doing here is I upload it to this machine, and then I'm executing that process with the credentials of this other user who's in the admin group. So basically I already compromised this host, I have a way to upload files, I have a standard user account, and I notice that this user has admin access, and lo and behold, I happen to have this user's access, this user's credentials. So I'm using this user's credentials now to execute my code with elevated permissions, to add myself to the system as admin, right? Now, I could just read the file, right? But one of the things we need to do at, in the OCP is we need to have a shell. So by adding those credentials, I'm able now to RDP in this machine, which is now my shell. I'm on this box as my user, able to access these other items. Um, great, um, great command to use. And what you would do is you would use FTP or some other method to get this file up there and save this as a PS1 file on your machine. And once this file is on that machine, all you're gonna have to do is use PowerShell-execution policy, so ex execution policy bypass. We wanna bypass the security controls of this, and then dash file to specify this file. Now when we specify a, a PowerShell file, we wanna use back, uh, sorry, dot backslash. So basically, for example, this would be dot backslash mic.ps1, right? Now that would execute my script, read that file into the file, and then execute all those arguments. If it was successful, it would come back to our screen and says command completed, right? And basically we can now uh, run it, uh, log in as that user. You can try using Netcat and other stuff like that if you can get it to work. I had some issues, that's why I used, uh, I built a, my own C program. Very simple C program build, and actually what I'll do is I'll actually show you my C program. So this is all I'm doing with this script, right? So it's a simple uh, C script, and basically it's doing a net user mic. It's using the system execute, right? And it's adding me into the system. <clears throat> IB, did I fix this one? I. 
So this one's actually wrong. Actually, this one won't work. Uh, we did I, B, and I, actually this one will work. So this one is correct. So net user mic password, net local group administrator mic, uh, net local group remote desktop mic, and then if I need to enable the registry key. Now we just compile this and run that. It's very simple C script. Something you should definitely keep uh, in your box just in case you need it. So let's jump back over here. So once we run that, now we're running the, that script as an elevated user and we're basically compromising that box. Awesome script to use. Definitely put into your toolkit. If you're still doing hack the box, definitely work on one of the active, active, active hack the box machines. Next thing I realized is um, a machine that I compromised the first time around, I couldn't figure out how I compromised it the first time because in Noom for Linux, no longer told me the SMB version of, or the Samba version of this system. Now this box has a very well known vulnerability <clears throat> and I can no longer figure it out. So what I did here is I actually looked on the forum for this one. I found this guy wrote a script that actually will tell you the Samba version. And it's a great little tool. And I saved that into my tools folder. So <clears throat> if we got to CD slash root slash tools, you can see a whole bunch of tools I have out here that I've been using uh, throughout the thing. So Crowbar, Decodify, Green Whisper is great for uh, any type of Stego stuff. Impact it. Make sure your Impact is updated if you haven't done so already. Jaws, just another Windows em um, emulator. Basically, they'll go through looking for uh, post enumeration stuff, kernel exploitation, or any type of exploitation. Kernel Pop is something I saw some other people using. I downloaded it, I haven't actually played with it yet. Uh, knock for port knocking. Uh, no sequel map. I used that on a few other boxes. PS Spy. If you haven't seen PS Spy yet, definitely check out PS Spy. I first found it on Hack the Box. It is a, uh, a uh, application, a compiled application that runs in memory, and it'll tell you all the processes running. It basically monitors the file system. So every time a new process kicks off, it tells you what's going on. So it's great for identifying like cron jobs, things like that that's running in the background. But what we're going to talk about here is this smbvir.sh. So let's do cat smbvir.sh. So the author of this is uh, Re War Dunn. I found him on the OCP forums, and he wrote this little script. And what this script is basically doing is going out using TCP dump. So you have to run this as root. It runs TCP dump and then search the query for the word Samba, and then basically dumps out the information about the Samba version. So basically for this option, right? So let's say we're going to do um, dash slash SMB ver. <clears throat> and you can see it comes back with the Unix Samba version 227A, right? It's not 100% accurate, right? It takes a little finagling. We'll go out there and do a little research by digging. But now that'll tell us exactly which version we need to go dig for. Now, unfortunately, as I said, the Enum for Linux no longer shows this. And it used to show it, I'll show you exactly where I used to show it. So where we used to see it is right here, where it says share enumeration. So what we used to be able to see is share enumeration, where we see this warning message, and right underneath this warning message, it would tell us about the Samba version. It no longer tells us that. Uh, we do see Samba versions for other boxes, but not for this box in general. So, be, with that being said, SMB ver, I'll post a link to that or I'll copy the code down and post it somewhere for you guys to access. Great tool to have. Awesome. Uh, definitely well worth adding to your toolkit when you're doing any type of SMB enumeration. Uh, and you know that it's a Unix box. It only does Samba versions. It won't do the Windows boxes. So SMB ver. The final thing I want to cover from a technical standpoint uh, for today is the PHP encoding using uh, PHP encoded payloads. Uh, there is a box where you're able to execute your PHP script uh, within a database and it dumps your data uh, from the database to a flat file. So you basically can save it as a PHP file. One thing I noticed is any special characters was getting truncated, altered, mangled. So what I decided to do is, using PHP, I was PHP encoding, base64 encoding the file, and then writing the file out to the directory because the directory was already writable because we were able to create files in that directory. 
So basically, I'm defining a string. I'm putting my uh, base64 payload here. And this payload right here is just basically saying the PHP info page. And I am saving it out to the directory. So this is the directory and with the file name I want to save it as. And basically, I'm opening up the file, writing the file, and then basically using the base64 to decode my string and write that file out and then close out the file. So that allows me to then basically save that file out into the hard drive and I'm able to go from there. Um, awesome script to have available to you. All right, so what else is there left, right? So we went through these three uh, quick notes here. Give you guys a little bit of tech in here. I'm gonna have to edit some of the stuff in the video uh, to hide some of the OSCP type stuff in it. But what's coming up next? So as I said, May, uh, March 21st is my next attempt. Uh, I'm scheduled for, so uh, I'm basically gonna spend the remaining 30 days attacking boxes. Uh, my lab report's all done. My um, my my uh, exercises are all done. I do need to go back and look at one of them. I keep meaning to do that. Um, but what else am I gonna do in between? So once I'm done staying for the OSP, I do have about three to four months to stay for the GX pen and get that done. GX pen A is gonna be quite a bit of reading. Um, yeah, it's five, five books about, at least this thick each, right? So there's five of them, this is only three of them. So it's a lot of material to go through. Um, and there's actually, with the GX pen, there's actually a uh, practical as well, where you're actually driving a virtual machine or a debugger. So that's gonna be a bit of work. Um, I do want to shoot some buffer overflow videos, uh, especially after that class. A lot of cool stuff I learned there. And uh, also, I still want to do a video about uh, this little device I have here. Um, this is a device I used on a recent uh, Red Team engagement about maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. It is a um, hidden USB camera that has a wireless as well, so it can send you notifications, you can connect here remotely. Um, but we'll go into that video more at that time. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, share it out to your friends. Uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. If you have any comments, questions, comment below. And talk to you later. Have a good night.